So I graduated from uh, IIT Kharagpur in 1986 with a degree in mechanical engineering. And from there I went to Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. I joined uh, University of Michigan for my MBA. After I graduated from Michigan, Microsoft uh, picked me up. I was there for six, six and a half years. In February uh, 2000, I went to my manager and uh, uh, I basically resigned. I left and uh, on March 1, I started this company. I had gotten together with uh, one of my classmates uh, from Michigan. His name is uh, Terry Quest. So I convinced him to move to Seattle and uh, basically join us as a partner. Eventually he left and became part of the company. So we basically were trying to develop a B2B marketplace for uh, uh, marketing services. We named uh, that service uh, Marketing Q. So we needed to develop uh, the product. I was unable to recruit uh, a programmer. In fact, uh, I mentioned to someone later that in those days, people with two-year college degree and with barely you know, basic skills were uh, demanding $100,000 salary plus benefits, which uh, to me did not make any economic sense uh, at the time. So after uh, basically realizing that is the hiring situation in Seattle, I asked Darren, hey, can I take three months off and let me just pack my bags and uh, go to India and see what can be done there. Mumbai is the commercial capital of India. There are a lot of companies here, relatively compared to the uh, rest of India, more westernized and more professional. Partly because life is faster here and uh, a lot of work gets done here. So we are in uh, Villepal East. So this is Agarwal Market. We are in front of Building B. And uh, this is where our first office in India was. When we were looking to set up the office uh, in India, I called up my father-in-law and said, hey, um, can you help me find some space in Mumbai? And in those days, the office space in Mumbai was uh, even more limited than it is today. One of the considerations was that if we leased uh, uh, another space, larger space, um, can we really afford to keep the lease for three years? Because we didn't know if uh, you know we can make the model work uh, uh, even beyond a year. So this uh, space here uh, belongs to my mother-in-law. She basically vacated the apartment. Within three months, we converted it to a to a fairly nice office. It's a fairly small office. So I stayed here for almost 90 days. Three months, I didn't go home. We had uh, two young kids, and my wife Arpita, she um, she put up with that. I was basically staying here and just waiting around for the interior remodeling to get completed. So it's about 400 uh, square feet carpet area. The challenge was how to design it so that we could maximize the utility of the space. So we had one uh, conference room which we would use for um, interviews and uh, some of the meetings and uh, some of the phone calls or conference calls. So that is that room. This is the pillar. So what we did was we basically started uh, having desks which were touching the wall. So that way we could maximize the, the movement uh, of the people. We obviously had to adapt with time, uh, adopt new technologies faster than our competitors could do. But really, we didn't focus uh, so much on our competitors as uh, on our customers. We tried to always uh, think from customer's point of view or client's point of view and see what we could deliver to them. It was probably around 2001, 2002. We just didn't have any more space and uh, we needed something close to the station. This office is very close to the station, so most of our people uh, could uh, uh, basically come by train. So there are a lot of um, small restaurants nearby, a lot of amenities that are available. So we were able to use it. And uh, best of all, uh, my in-laws, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, they lived uh, right there across the street. So I could uh, basically walk to the office and, uh, you know, go home for lunch. The dot-com uh, boom in the the bubble, as, uh, as we know it now, burst in uh, March while I was forming the company. 
but I think that news had not reached India, at least the employers and the employment market. So it was nearly impossible to hire anyone in India. Okay, so somebody suggested, hey, let's uh, put out an ad in the newspaper, Times of India. So now there was no advertising agency that was available to do our work. Finally, we were able to find a contact through my father-in-law, who was in the public relations, and they also had a side uh, business of uh, advertising. That's how we started uh, hiring our uh, first set of employees. When you have a bunch of passionate, smart, intelligent people, the rest of the things start falling in place automatically. You don't have to put too much of energy to get the other things rolling. I have zero knowledge about, you know, whatever uh, administration related works, accounts, whatever. But after joining these and, uh, you know, after, faith, uh, you know, higher management uh, put the faith on me and uh, I just, you know, keep on working, working and it's very open. It's, uh, you can say, you can uh, you know, talk to Rajiv as whatever. I had this issue. I can talk to Amrish, I can talk to anybody. As a company, MAQ Software gives people a lot of responsibility early on. The organization structure is sort of flat, as a result of which you get a lot of responsibilities earlier than you probably would in any other company. There is a lot of youth in the company and there's a lot of at least positive thinking and new thinking along with um, experience okay, that uh, I mean, Rajiv brings in and the at least top management brings in. First year, uh, we did not make any money, we lost money. To some extent, we were in investment mode, so we didn't have any revenues. So our first income tax return form showed uh, zero revenue and all the expenses. The problem was when we tried to buy PCs, um, personal computers, which we needed, the dealers would not uh, accept our check because we had no rating. Uh, we had no credit with them. So they said, OK, once the check cashes, then we'll place the order, then the PCs will be manufactured, then they will come to you. So again, I was able to use uh, one of our friends uh, to get a reference to a PC dealer and you were able to buy some PCs. When uh, I started the company, I had no idea, no, not even by the widest, wildest imagination that, uh, you know, I'll end up working with uh, Arpita, my wife. In uh, 2001, um, we really were in Redmond, so it was really only two, three people. It was Darren and myself, and we really needed some technical help. And we realized that um, instead of hiring someone from outside, uh, if we are able to convince Arpita to join us, we'll have the necessary credibility because she had uh, worked in uh, technical roles, as well as uh, financial flexibility because we didn't have to pay her. So that worked out and she was happy and uh, ever since she has been a major part of the company. The reason why I came in, was because I, I knew I could make an impact, I knew I could make a difference, and then there was just so much to be learned in terms of different solutions that could be provided for various sort of uh, problems that were in the IT. So the flexibility, the unknown, and the ability to sort of form that unknown into something that was meaningful for a particular problem in IT was something that drew me. When I first came, it was very, very new. We were very few people doing simple things like buying a computer, um, having an office, being able to um, go and meet a client was very, very difficult, um, but it was very exciting. I remember days when we worked long hours, long evenings, long nights, did not go home for a few days in between, slept on the couch in the office in order to be able to do the work we, we could. The passion involved in being able to see the first line of code that we wrote, which connected an application um, and was being used, was so great that I remember the entire office celebrating on that day. So it was just exciting, new opportunities, new areas, lots to learn, that's really how MAQ Software was. It was Darren who went and convinced Arpita because he was a significant player and we really needed to convince all of the key members of the team. The other significant uh, player uh, in the company was uh, Vikram Kumar who was basically heading our operations in India. He had uh, interacted with Arpita because when Arpita came in December 2000, she also gave uh, some technical talks and lectures to the staff because we really needed all the help we could get. We were so starved for technical resources. When I got here, I was employee number three in actually Redmond office. 
I came in, I started the consulting division. We started working with actually the Microsoft Windows team, developing certain driver related codes. That was our very first project. I started, you know, that's when actually some of the revenue for the company started. We essentially um, learned um, through our mistakes in those early days. At that time, we were trying to do too much with too little. We learned how to focus, kind of narrow the areas that we worked on, develop our core expertise in particular types of software, and then sort of moved on to, you know, doing more and larger projects. Arpita, I've been working very closely with her. She's great and she's uh, very practical and she's very amiable. She understands, she takes care of the control of the situation very easily. If I want to get certain things and I want to move on with the new initiatives, things are like lightning speed compared to any other organization. So given that we have that kind of enthusiasm and then energy and then ability to catch up and then be more agile, I think we can easily sustain and then even surpass some of the competitors that we have in the market right now. The way in which um, leadership works over here is we're pretty much, um, all of us are non-supervised. We do not operate in the supervisor model and that's one of the things that I really like about the company. And I expect um, myself as well as my team members to operate and govern themselves in order to deliver their work correctly. It's kind of a pretty good ride in terms of learning new things, both from Rajiv and Arpita probably leading multiple uh, teams, how to really grow about, look at different opportunities, not only from your projects, but how to help the company grow as well. It's not that we have great developers who are different from other companies. It's a process that we have set in place wherein we validate things, we have put in certain checklists from our experiences in place so that even if someone new joins in, they're able to maintain within a couple of dev cycles the higher level of quality that we have kind of ingrained through the checklist system. Every Friday we have a learning hour. We share our experiences, whatever we learn throughout the you know, the quarter. And that really helped me to grow and understand and keep up to date with latest technology. So that's one thing that I'm gonna, you know, take from here, a lot of learning and a lot of self-growth. We have been staying, I would say, close ever since I joined this particular job. Some of those friends are still here with me. That is actually kind of an interesting fact. And then we don't want to lose that particular kind of bonding. We want to stay together. That is the primary driving factor behind that. Year two, we started breaking even, and uh, year three onwards, we started, uh, you know, being profitable. What I realized was it's much better to hire people um, from uh, directly from campuses and train them because a lot of the people who had worked for uh, basically other service providers and IT majors, they were uh, really doing things very differently than uh, the way I wanted to uh, do it and uh, I thought was proper way to do it. We looked for people that had uh, excellent uh, academic backgrounds and uh, went to local colleges and then we went to other uh, universities as well and uh, slowly recruited people from there. Uh, the most uh, challenge for them is to kind of uh, integrate into this environment from the college. So uh, changing their uh, habits, daily habits, you know, getting up early, having a routine. I hold a lot of at least positive spirit and I try to inculcate the same in my team. I mentor them, I motivate them, right? Everything is within us. So there is nothing that we cannot do and it is not achievable. The environment was really energetic, it was lively. Uh, there were no grumpy faces. If you look at this organization, it is run by a bunch of passionate people. From the very first couple of months, I realized that I was surrounded by very smart people. I mean, my peers were very smart, people who were, who were supervising me were very smart and intelligent people. And at the same time, culturally, it was a very supportive environment where you could, you, you could freely approach a person, ask them your doubts and not be judged as somebody, oh, you don't know this, that kind of a situation never came. Here, it's a very open culture. I can walk up to Rajiv any day and say, Rajiv, this is what I think. And you know, he will accept it, he will embrace it. When the culture, when people are so open to learning and accepting and you yourself constantly rediscover who you are. We had some very intelligent people uh, with us. One of them was uh, Vikram Kumar. He was the first director of the company. So he was a big thinker. So he'll always push me. He'll always challenge me to think bigger. He hired some of the, uh, you know, all the graduates from the best institutes here. First project I did was um, for Microsoft, which was uh, $3,000. And that was the first contract that uh, really got us the entry uh, into Microsoft. I used to come to Mumbai to interact with the team and uh, provide the necessary support every two to three months. So I made uh, five, to, five to six trips. 
and uh, I was able to come and stay with my in-laws and every other trip I would uh, also make a trip to my hometown uh, called Shah Janpur and um, visit with my family and uh, follow up on some of the projects I was working on there. Every time when we were challenged we were able to come through with some better solutions and over time I must say that you know we are always a better company. We are better from last year, better from the time we started. When I joined the company, we were hardly having two to three projects being executed at any point in time. Around 2007, 2008 time frame, we went up to close to 30 odd projects. So, you know, number of projects grew as projects grew, obviously the number of people needed, required also went up. Our office was very lively. People were very enthusiastic. They all wanted to make a difference. They all wanted to contribute. And they were very curious about the clients that we had. So often I would go and give the, the user perspective, the industry perspective. And we were writing software that a million users were using on a daily basis. Um, the software was written in 42 languages, run in 110 countries. So the impact of really the work was not very imaginable to some of the people who were working. So that was the kind of experience that I brought back to the team as we were talking through some of the issues. So I don't think there was one moment when we realized, hey, we are suddenly going to make it big. Every year we consistently just made, we, we consistently worked hard to make sure that we were doing more than we had done the previous year or the previous day or the previous week, whichever parameter we took in. I start a new book every fiscal year. Um, that book actually starts the very first project which uh, you know we have for that particular year. It kind of lists that and I keep that same book for the entire uh, year, uh, writing down every single note, every single meeting that I have been in, action items, progress that we've been doing and some of these other sort of ideas that come up. As I look through these last 15 years, 2002, we were really working on eight or 10 projects. 2015, we are working on 60 plus every quarter. It was just unproductive at that time. So we decided to look for even bigger facility. I was discussing my dilemma with uh, Arpita and she says, uh, have you thought about Hyderabad? I had never been to Hyderabad, so I really didn't even think that was uh, a viable option. But uh, Microsoft had uh, opened a big facility. So from client point of view, it gave me synergy. And we were able to find uh, the space in Cyberpearl, which was uh, owned by a private individual, which was part of the Ascenda's uh, building. And uh, so we rented 5,000 square feet within actually 60 days at the time we were up and running. So in Hyderabad, again, um, we had to start from um, ground zero and hire some of the local individuals from local universities. Now, uh, obviously, it uh, seems like a tough time, but in those days, we thought that's the way it is, and we really didn't think much of it, and we were reasonably happy and satisfied with the way things were go uh, going. So in about two to three years, uh, we started surveying for additional space because we were outgrowing that space also. So that's how we ended up in this particular space. We built it in a modular way because one of the key concerns I had was to keep operating costs to a manageable level uh, because I didn't want to stress the finances of the company. Rajiv wanted to make a very simple office. It's like 100% productivity, 100% flexibility because we, we were used to small offices. We were used to small projects like we used to have 10, 15 projects, 10, 15 different teams, you know, small, small teams. We need to set up this office. We bought this facility, and that time we didn't even want this much facility, this much big facility. So what we did was we divided the space into four uh, specific wings or zones that uh, we could uh, start out independently because we had only 80 people. And uh, the facility that we had taken was more than six times the space we were occupying at the time. And really it was, a again, a, another big leap of faith it's not like building an office. What are the problems we had in our past office? Number one problem, okay, problem with network connectivity. Here we're gonna have a lot of people working, so we want to make sure that we have very less amount of downtime. How do we solve that problem? So we figured out a way how we can, we change the whole network according to kind of the way we want and to solve that problem. 
gradually we came into a uh, polycom based system where we at least had a speaker phone on top of the table and everyone was able to listen to it and contribute to it still we were not into ip telephony at that point ajiv he got in a lot of thought leadership in terms of introducing some of these systems that we have today so first thing was the uh, ip telephony that we have so you know it's it's just great like i would say like you we don't really have any receptionist who is transferring calls at any location and we can just lift up the phone call anyone across the three locations and it just works seamless and i think a uh, lot of things have changed in mba they teach us a lot of things they talk about growth they talk about numbers they talk about change but nobody talks about inflection points at certain levels all the systems that we have at that particular time for the organization break they, they just cannot sustain so rajiv has this habit of putting us putting challenges in front of us you know very constructive manner we have started having video calls and that changed the game altogether we are able to see people face to face we are able to understand expressions and uh, we can relate to how the team sentiments are when certain issues are escalated on phone calls It really adds a lot of value to the overall conversation when we talk about video calls since we set the hiring standards very high we we haven't had you know hundreds and thousands of people come in over the years we have been very selective in our selection process and in the interviewing process and hiring process i have always seen myself surrounded by people who in many cases i used to feel you know they are smarter than me and i really have to push myself to you know match up to their standards and and as long as we are able to give uh, young motivated engineers that environment we'll be able to do work in almost any domain and in any technology my recruitment process was uh, uh, a bit different than most of the other people uh, in my batch so vikram who was the director at that time he came down to our campus for uh, recruitment they gave out the first uh, you know aptitude test and iq test he asked one or two questions very general uh, you know bio data kind of question and the third question was uh, who should we give offer to apart from you and i was like are you giving me an offer and he's like yes so that we have decided now you tell me who are those the next person who is giving offer to and i was like completely shell shocked i had no clue how uh, how that happened later i got to know that he went through all my uh, all the softwares that i had developed and uh, things like that i was made the hiring manager on that spot and i was just uh, doing the shortlisting for uh, mq software at that time so on the first day when i entered actually girish was the hr manager and he told me okay uh, you know a warm welcome to all of you and he had he had a very you know very amazing style of talking and all so welcomed all of us and said everybody please grab a screw driver and we were like we are computer science engineers have been recruited for software why are we asked to grab grab a screw driver so we grabbed the screw driver each person had a screw driver and said now you are going to assemble your own computer the parts are there the microprocessor is there uh, ram is there go and assemble your own computer and we were like really so we thought it's a training exercise let's do it and i had done it before so it was easy for me i get, did it and all those things and i completed it and i was like yeah i had done this the first assignment is over and now let's see what next and he tells me this is going to be your computer for next one year and i'm like oh really <laughs> i need to open this and get other stuff in but that was the that's that's the culture of uh, uh you know our company we don't do things just for the heck of it we do things because that's what we really want people to do in their so there is no training in general there is a very specific training that things that we want people to do we want people to use those are the things which are part of the training so ever since i started the company i realized that uh, most companies face uh, two challenges regardless of the industry or the size one of them is uh, related to communication um between the employees or within the uh, employees um and obviously clients and customers and all these things and the second one is related to training so we spent lot of energy on uh, trying to improve uh, the communication within the company and uh, recently what we have uh, we have been able to do is use uh, video conferencing in a cost effective way using publicly available services like google hangout to do video conferences across uh, three locations I don't think so ever in my career with the company uh, Rajiv ever uh, allowed us to stay on the same technology he was always making sure that we are pushing ourselves to move forward in the new technology whatever is introduced and uh, stay on top of it 
I spent most of my time actually in the um, Redmond office, working closely with the clients. And then in the early days, I used to work every evening with the India team as well, literally transferring all of the requirements, ensuring that uh, the bills were getting done. In the morning, I would check in, check the bills, uh, test it, go demo to the clients, uh, work with the clients during the day to gather additional requirements and uh, kind of project manage uh, essentially the all of the work we had. Over the years, I have actually continued to be more in the Redmond office, providing the stability as well as continuity for all of the work that we do, not just with Microsoft, but several of the other customers that we have and being sort of, you know, involved in all of the delivery in a very subtle way. My key enjoyment has been that I have really, really enjoyed working with all the folks that we have had on our teams over the years. We got some of the brightest and the best engineers in the industry. However, most of them had never worked on a software that people could use before. Seeing the progression of as people grew, first, you know, learning to write the lines of code, then getting to a point where they were able to see their lines of code in action, and then eventually moving in between the offices, sort of, you know, whether that was Mumbai, Hyderabad, or Redmond. I know overall as a company, as a team, we never give up. The thing I love hearing most is when somebody over in the Mumbai office or Hyderabad office on a phone call tells me, Arpita, don't worry, just get the work, we'll get it done. And that's really, I think, what makes a difference. It's like an extended family to me. Everyone is so well bonded here and it's a highly collaborative environment. So I feel like I'm in a, at home, you know, I feel at home. When you are with your friends, the, the integrity aspect is always at its peak. Whether it be it software, delivery, any sort of uh, communication that needs to happen, MAQ will ensure that it is delivered. You have kind of a, a freedom to try new tools and test new technologies and you are encouraged to share that with your team. I feel like we have a freedom to get better at whatever we like to do. This is a very unique company, as you can say, because here learning is tremendous. Regardless of the designation, what you have, a title, what you have, you get to work in multiple roles. I realize that uh, if we have to grow, we have to make sure that we deliver on our commitments. Especially in services, if you keep on delivering on your commitments, customers will come back to you for more. So we really did not invest a lot of energy on, um, on uh, sales and marketing uh, over the years. Despite some of those uh, limitations, we were able to grow our business consistently uh, year over year, mainly through uh, referrals from uh, our clients their own uh, repeat work. Whenever they went to a new group, they basically brought us in uh, with them. So we were able to create a very, very, very strong uh, reputation. We are only as good as uh, the last uh, build that we have delivered to our clients. So in order for us to do that, I realized uh, that uh, it is extremely important for us to make sure that uh, our team members are uh, trained properly. Training is uh, obviously a buzzword. Every company does it and we also do it. What we were able to do was come up with some innovative ways of uh, training a lot of the young graduates. We have to make sure that uh, they know the technologies that we are working on. They are able to understand uh, the context of their work. Starting with uh, 2003, uh, we started uh, a very rigorous training program for fresh uh, college uh, graduates and we internally named it as uh, Bootcamp. And it was at that time, about three months, we gave them exposure to internet. We gave them exposure to a lot of the other uh, uh, technologies. And that way we were able to, at least I was confident that every one of uh, the people, every one of the engineers had certain base level of skills. After that, I knew they were smart and they are resourceful and they are able to find the solutions on their own. Something about the processes within MAQ as well as the people that they have on board just got things done faster and at a very high level of current technology and quality. I would say from day one. In fact, before day one, most people when they join, they have a boot camp that might even start like the Saturday before their Monday, right? That gets them up to speed to be able to do the minimal work. And then we have extended training that while they're doing their initial projects that they expand what they know, that'll still keep them fully engaged with the projects at a technical level. 
it really helped me a lot when I kind of understood what technology set and what platform is it that I'm going to work on. At the same time, it gave me the confidence to execute on production grade customer projects that allowed to deliver and identify the core concepts. Sometimes there is mentorship as needed for the team member to be able to learn on different projects. In the early part when we did not have a structured training program, every new hire actually shadowed me for about six months and then I shadowed them to um, ensure that they were able to learn both the job as well as the delivery of work that we do. In engineering, we earlier used to go to local colleges. So one day he said, now we have to raise the bar, let's go to NITs and IIITs and let's see how we can get 50 people. 50 engineers for a company of size of uh, not even 100, it's not easy. And from going to NIT, IIIT, where nobody has even heard our brand. I think there were certain people who were there from before, but that's like very minority. And now we are going there aggressively and the entire HR team was shocked. Most companies uh, don't have a culture of uh, basically continuous learning through books. And most individuals or many individuals also uh, do not have the time or interest in uh, reading printed books. So I would uh, come and encourage uh, all of our key members, at least the supervisors, to read uh, business books or books on management so that uh, they will have some context or perspective because a lot of them didn't have any other exposure outside of uh, this company. I would literally buy tens of books for our team members, put them in the library, assign them to different individuals and say, look, can you read at least one book a month? And to my disappointment, uh, even that did not happen. So what I did was I started uh, basically converting the book to a PowerPoint and I will deliver a one hour summary of that book in person to our key supervisors and uh, managers and I will repeat it. So that way I know that uh, at least uh, 10 to 12 books got read. The genesis of uh, this book is really around lack of counseling that is available to young graduates, uh, especially in context of the graduates in India. So millions of people graduate, but many few, very few of them have, uh, you know, the level of self-awareness uh, that might be useful to somebody who joins the industry. I had to research many additional topics. I had to go and study uh, what was exactly written by other thought leaders and how it applies in our context and in context of our company. The only way we can learn is by reading and continuously growing ourselves. He wanted us to live more and not many mentors or leaders think like that. Personally, he's a leader, he's a great leader. He's always there to help. He understands the big picture. He has a very, very positive way of looking at things and being able to think clearly all the time. He has been our strategic thinker, executioner and operations person, whereas I have been more sort of the glue between all of these areas, helping and facilitating the environments. However, when I reflect back and I look at some of the, the bolder decisions, the decision to sometimes take on clients uh, where the work may be either very fast paced or the technology is unknown, or sometimes we are not confident because of our skill set in the area, have been ones that come from me. I have been sort of more in a support role for both the employees who are involved or the team members who are involved in completing the project. So my leadership style is more, okay, let me help you get to this, to the next level rather than being a boss. So it kind of, you know, has worked out well. Things that limit growth of any company, is around the growth of the people, specifically growth of the leaders. Wherever we are, it's because of uh, my own uh, limitations, my own growth. What we have tried to do is consistently grow 10 to 20% every year. That is where we are going. Uh, this is a software company, we deliver software, but I would say this is a training company. If you ask me, Naveen, uh, why do you stay back? It's been 10 years. My answer to that question, I get paid for learning, nothing else. If I join any university in the world, I may not get this much learning. I think if you don't learn, you don't grow. There's something new every time you come to work. That excites me, that's why I keep coming here. There is always something new and exciting. When I walk in, I know that I have a day which essentially involves looking at you know various works, having client meetings, but I don't know which one of them will turn into a new opportunity, an exciting solution, or something that will keep me sleepless at night. You know, from this point where I'm standing, across the three locations, we have 400 plus employees. So when I joined, it was 40, and today it's 400 plus. So it's 
tremendous growth and these are not bogus numbers these are not numbers which go up for a particular quarter and come down for another quarter or something so this has been a consistent growth it gives me a lot of satisfaction to have a company that survived for 15 years uh, those of us who have studied uh, history of business it's really hard to survive uh, in any business for that long especially in industries that are so dynamic and uh, changing all the time when i ask uh, some of the former employees and some of the current employees they will say this was a great place where they learned a lot for most of the people it was their first job the amount of knowledge they get in their first job is significant but even if you discount that and think about people who have been there for a long time or you know who are doing their second or third job we were able to create a learning culture around that and i hope uh, many will continue for uh, rest of their life